Hey everyone. Um, okay, so I made these cute little silly embroidered Barbie chokers for the Barbie movie this weekend. And they're so simple and they're so quick and I'm going to show you how to make them. Okay, you can see that I made three of these and they're really simple. It's a, a micro text, a, a, a complex fill, and some single lines and that is all I used. Um, they could be any size. You could make them as large as your hoop is. You can make them small enough to be bracelets or an anklet. It's all the same concept. So let's turn a few of these off and just look at the first one that I made uh, step by step. So the first thing I did was draft my complex fill, which is going to be my, my base of the whole design. The next thing I did was put in my single lines. Actually, that's a lot. The next thing I did was put in my text and center it. And then I drafted in my single lines, which I did a ring on either end and then a piece running from the ring for detail. The ring on either end is how we are going to make these uh, ties attach. So I cut them out with a grommet uh, tool. You can cut them out with a scissor. Or in lieu of these, you could even um, dra or digitize them to the width of jewelry findings. If you want to go to Michael's or something, you can get the little like um, uh, like woven claw uh, metal pieces that go on the end of like a woven bracelet that you can then put chain on. Um, that would be cute. Or you could put grommet, uh, or not grommets, you could put jump links through the, the little stitched grommet uh, and attach chain that way or just a closure depending on what size you're making it. So let's just go ahead and draft one. Okay, so I'm going to use some hotkeys again. I'm going to select my complex fill tool, uh, which is right over here. If you are not using hotkeys, it's right over here. And I'm going to push or Alt and Scroll to really get in here and zoom into my design. Um, and I have my grid set up to be uh, uh, 10 millimeters per inch, uh, which is easier for me to look at. So I decided to make mine 3 millimeters wide. So we will go ahead and start right on a line. Let's start on a, on a cross point of the grid. Select a point. If I want perfect square corners, I'm going to hold Alt down while I move, and it's going to constrain my line for me to every, I think it's, what is it, 15 degrees or 30 degrees or something? I don't know. Um, but I want right angles, so I'm going to use it for my right angles. And I'm going to bring that straight over three squares on mine, because that's going to be three millimeters, which is the size that I want, but you can make it as wide as you want. I will click another point. I'm going to go and scroll down. Um, I don't need to see that where the top of what I was digitizing is, because if I uh, hold Alt and then try and move, it's going to constrain it straight down at 90 degrees. So that's all I need it to do. So we'll go ahead and put another line there. We're going to bring that straight over, one, two, three, while holding Alt, put another point, and then when I push Enter, we're going to have a perfect rectangle. So let me scroll back out, and then it's going to let us put in any holes. If we have any, we don't, so we'll push Enter, and then our start stops, and as you already know, I like to start all of my pieces directly inside the center of whatever I'm filling, just in case there's that little bit of oil on the on your presser foot, uh, we don't want to stain the fabric. On this again, it's not really going to matter because we're going to cut everything out all the way around our shape, but it's a practice that I'm in. So I'm going to start here and I'm going to end at, pick an end, top or bottom. We're going to end this one at the bottom. And we have our complex fill put in. Um, I'm not really sure why. I guess I was playing around with, with different colors when I was deciding what to use, and 1910 is a color I was considering, but then I ended up going with 1909. So let's move this and change it back to 1909. I'm just going to select the element and then go over to colors I've already used and change it to uh, our electric pink. Uh, if you don't want to do it that way, or if you don't have a color selected yet, you can always right-click on your element, scroll up to color, and then this window will pop up and you can either scroll through here and search for the color you want or if you know the color you want you can type it in there 
and it will change it to 1909 and apply. Let's say we want to make it purple. 1880 is a favorite of mine. We could make it purple, um, but for now we'll stick with 1909. All right, step one, we're finished. Step two, we're gonna put in our decoration. So this could all be one color if you wanted, but I'm gonna stick with using two different colors because that's what I did on the other ones and I think the contrast is cute. So I'm gonna do this with a single line center. Um, so if we go up here, we can click on our single line. What is my hotkey for single line? I think I have it set up to be an S. Um, I don't remember what it is like naturally in the software, uh, but mine is an S. And then I'm going to also come over below that and I'm going to click this auto circle input because I want a perfect sphere for this. So I'm going to click that and I'm also going to come up here and I'm going to move this to at least 25 points. I think anything smaller than 25 points is just too small to be durable, especially when we're doing this kind of nonsense. So I will, now that I'm all set up, I've got my single line selected, I've got my circle input selected, I've moved up to 25 uh, points for my width. I'm going to select a point I will go ahead and push Alt. I didn't really select the right point, did I? Well, it's okay, we'll move the element here in a minute. I'm gonna get the circle to where I think is probably a good size circle, and then I'm gonna pop it over there. I've made this a little large, so if we wanna shrink it down, we can hold Shift and Alt together, and then that will shrink the whole thing symmetrically. And let's really zoom in here. So we can see what we're doing, get these really right on placement-wise, get it centered. That looks pretty good. I might... Well, actually, no, that looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and change this color so it's easier to look at in the light pink. Baby pink is the color we're using, 815 Madeira Baby Pink. And that's pretty good. I might bulk this up a little bit more. You can see... Let's actually see what I did on the other... Oh. Oh, it's at 17 because because we changed the size. It changes the width automatically. So we're going to bulk this up to 25. Yeah, that's what I did on the other one. 25 is good. And in fact, this one looks even better than my other one. This one got a little bit oblong. I'm not really sure what I did there and why that happened, but it did. So this will be an improvement on the one I already did. Um, here's what I want to do. Because we want to minimize our cuts and our trims, we're going to arrange this so that we don't have to trim anything the whole way through. So let's click on here. doesn't really matter where we start, but we want to stop at the top so that we can then do our next single line and run it as far over as we want to go. Which we're going to just look off the one I've already done and use that as our guide. So we're going to go ahead and click our, well, I'm going to click my S. You're going to use whatever hotkey you have set up, because again, I changed mine. And I'm going to start it right on where that uh, end point from our grommet is. I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm going to bring it straight up, and I'm just going to line it up with the one I already did. And I'm going to push Enter, and there we have it. Now, we could do our text here, so it's just continually running at a line, or we could do the other side and then do our text later. Let's go ahead and do our text here. So I'm going to push exit to get out of this element so I'm not touching anything. I will go over to my selection tools, and I'm going to select the alphabet, click it, click anywhere on the page, it doesn't matter, and let's, uh, let's go ahead and make our well, let's not do Barbie this time. I already did a Barbie. Did a plastic. I did a Ken. Let's do dolls. Cute. Um, type it in. Push enter. Now, we can go into our lettering, and we can change this if we want to. We can change our height or our width to make it fit. We can pick our font. I did use microblock on the... Why is this not letting me choose a different font from here? Let's do it from this screen. If we go to this screen, we can choose any font we want. There are a few other micro fonts um, that come with Design Shop automatically. I used, uh, I think I used Micro Mini Block, or maybe I used Micro Block. Micro Mini Block is a bit bolder. That might be nice on this. 
Um, there's Mini Times, Saloon, which is super cute, but it's not going to get quite small enough for the recommended sizes. If we go over to our sizes that are recommended, we want to find something that's going to be around 0.2. If we use Saloon, which I love dolls spelled out in Saloon, I'm probably going to put that on something later, uh, it only goes down to 0.4, which is a little bit wide for this design. Uh, so let's go ahead and use Mini Micro Block, because it's nice and thick. And then let's change the height of this down to... Ooh, it's being real dramatic. There we go. Point... Uh, 213. That should work fine for us. Um, again, I'm going to zoom in, and then if we click anywhere within our text field, it'll turn these outer points uh, see-through, and we can scroll this. If we leave it alone at 90 degrees, we can also just rotate it down here. Doesn't matter. It's up to you how you want to do it. I'm going to go ahead and get this lined up in the center of my complex fill. There we go. Once you get it all the way lined up side to side, that red line, that horse hair or crosshair line will turn white and that's how you know that you are on this midline, which is great. I got a little bit uh, to the top, so if you press and hold shift and then use the arrow key, you can make little micro adjustments to get that nice and clean. That looks really good. I'm very happy with that. So if we zoom out a little bit, we can see the whole project again. Um, and now we just need to complete it. We're just going to do another single line and a grommet on the other end so we have somewhere to uh, lace it up with. So we could digitize this the exact same way, or we can save ourselves some time by holding the control key and selecting the two elements we want to duplicate. And then I have... Uh, I have hotkeys on my mouth to copy-paste, but if you don't have that, you can right-click and just click Duplicate, or click Control d and that will duplicate our design. And then, because we want to flip this upside down, I will go ahead and rotate it twice. I'm also going to go ahead and just move this to the other side of the lettering. And then, hold Alt, grab, shift it straight up and we can space it the exact same way. Now if we want to make sure that we are spot on with our grommet, it looks like we are. I think we did a nice job there. That looks good. We can make little micro adjustments if we want to, but I'm happy with it. And now we have something wonderful. Um, the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to change the order of my single line and my grommet here. Um, which you actually can't see, can you? Because I am, I'm just now realizing my video is covering that up. So let me move that up a little higher. Um, close all of these. Okay, now you can see it. So I'm going to grab uh, my single line center that makes the grommet, and I'm going to put that last in my sew order. Oh, I'm just going to open all these tabs back up when I know that I've moved something. So now it's going to sew from lettering to single line to grommet. And I just want to rearrange the order for the start stops. So I will grab that start stop and I will put it at the bottom. I will have it end at the grommet. And then I will have this grommet start right where it starts. And if I click my uh, update ties trims, there should be no ties or trims. Let me open this back or close everything back up uh, other than around the lettering. So this will sew this grommet straight into the single line. It'll trim for the lettering and then it will trim and sew that single line into that grommet. And now we have another little choker. Um, so go forth. Make chokers for the Barbie movie or whatever you want to do for your life. Uh, I think it's a really fun project.